morning and it's comparison time again. I've got a Nissan Leaf and a Hyundai Kona, two cars that, although they're different body shapes, sit very firmly in the same segment of the market. So let's see how they stack up against each other. True to form, the English weather is while well, fighting against us. So I'm gonna hide under this tree and I'm gonna give you the initial sort of facts and figures around these cars. So when we're looking at the Nissan Leaf and the, the Hyundai Kona, of course, they've both got two models now. They've both got a smaller and a larger battery. I'm gonna give you the prices for just the base models, but bear in mind that the, the vehicles we're looking at here today, that Nissan is a Tecna. That's the top of the range here in the UK. And the Kona is a premium SE. So again, the top of the range one. You won't necessarily get all the functions on both these cars for the prices I'm gonna give you, but. Um, spec them out yourself and see where you are. It just gives us a, a good idea for the comparison. So let's start by looking at the two smaller battery ones. So we've got the Nissan Leaf, which has got actually a usable 38 kilowatt hour battery, not 40 as they advertise it. And the Kona, which has got a 39 kilowatt hour battery, again, usable. They both retail for around 27, 28,000 pound, their base models. So they're very, very similarly priced. And in those cars, well, in the Leaf, you get a 110 kilowatt motor. In the Kona, you get a 100 kilowatt motor. You get naught to 60 in the Leaf of 7.9 seconds as opposed to 9.7 seconds in the Kona. Top speed in the Leaf, 89 miles an hour, Kona, 96 miles an hour. So similar figures, if anything, I suppose, because of the size and the shape of it, the Leaf is uh, a little bit quicker to uh, 60 but they haven't released as much power to give it that, uh, that top speed, the greater top speed. Charging wise, while well, the Kona's gone with CCS, which uh, in the smaller battery will charge up to 50 kilowatts on a rapid charger. The Nissan has gone with uh, the usual setup. They've got Type 2, which will charge up to seven kilowatts and Chadamo up to 50 kilowatts on a rapid charger. Range wise, well, realistically in a Leaf, you're gonna look at about 130, maybe 140 miles if you're good with your right foot. In the Kona, around about 150 miles. So now let's talk about their big brothers. So the Kona with the 64 kilowatt hour battery, which is usable against the Nissan Leaf E Plus, which has got a 60 kilowatt hour usable battery. Uh, they both do around about 100 miles an hour. They both do naught to 60 in just over seven seconds, about seven and a half seconds. Uh, they've both got uh, more or less the same size motors in them. The uh, Kona has 150 kilowatts, the Leaf has 160 kilowatts. Uh, again, the Kona uses CCS, the Leaf uses Chadamo and Type 2, but on this occasion, the bigger battery Kona will charge up to 100 kilowatts on that rapid charger. And mileage wise, well, the Kona beats the Leaf hands down. You're getting over 240 miles to the charge as opposed to the Leaf 210, maybe 215 miles. I will put a caveat on that. I haven't driven the new Leaf E Plus yet. So uh, I'm taking that as a general feeling for what people are saying at the moment. Until I drive it, I can't be 100% with that. So there are your basic figures for the two cars in their different guises. Let's have a look at the diameters and what they look like from the outside. So this is where, well, you know, some of these figures might surprise you because they, they did with me. I had in my mind that the Kona was by far and away the bigger car. But actually having them side by side now, you can see there's not that much difference. And it doesn't matter whether which variation of batteries you put in them, the outer diameter of all these cars are exactly the same. So let's have a look. The length of both cars, the Leaf, 4.49 meters, the Kona, 4.18 meters. Width-wise, the Leaf is 1.79 meters against the Kona, which is 1.8 meters, almost identical. So if you're one of these people that's worried about tight country lanes and getting around, and that's the reason why you wouldn't buy an SUV, well, don't worry about it. This thing is almost identical, if not smaller than this one. So uh, if that gives you some confidence, that might help you. Height, well, as we would imagine, the Kona is a little bit taller. It's 1.57 meters against 1.53 of the Leaf. But still again, it's not a huge difference, is it? But it's enough to make it feel a little bit more dominating when you're sat in the driver's seat of this being an SUV type vehicle. You just feel like your view is improved, but actually it's not that much taller. And the wheelbase itself, 2.7 meters in the Leaf, against 2.6 meters in the Kona. So as you can see, the Leaf is a bigger car, but I would suggest the Kona, when you're driving it and you're inside, it feels like a bigger car. 
Now, before we start looking at the front of both these cars, I just want to say another big thank you to Just EVs. Clearly, they've lent both these cars to me again today, as they have with a lot of the cars I've re reviewed recently. They've just asked me to let you know that should you want to buy a car from them, then they're happy to deliver nationwide, absolutely free of charge. Right, that's that to one side. Let's look at the front of these cars. They couldn't be more different, could they? This very much is uh, an off-roady SUV, soft-roady. They're trying to go for that little bit of a rugged look, where this one is a car, there's no doubt about it. What do I prefer? Well, there's bits and pieces to both that I like and dislike. On this one, I do like that rounded nose. I do like the way it looks at the front, the way it's quite imposing coming towards you. On this one, I really do like those lights. I think a lot of design effort's gone into those and, and I think it looks and it sets the front of the car off brilliantly. What I don't like about both, uh, I'm not keen on this area on the leaf and I really don't like the way the charge flap is, is inserted there. It's actually, it's a different material and you'll notice as they get older, the paint fades at a different rate. So it starts to become a little bit more obvious. On this one, not so keen on the lights. And uh, I don't really like this front grille bit. I've spoken about it before with all these uh, notches and holes in it. It's gonna be a nightmare to keep clean. So that's the front, but what about the side of the cars? And I'm, I'm gonna leave the Leaf till last because I, I do have my own views and opinions on that. The Kona, well, I think it just carries on that look. It's maybe not as striking from the side as it is from the front, but it's got that uh, squat, off-roady SUV type look. It's um, the only thing that really sets it off differently is uh, the wheels. They're kind of aero wheels because it's uh, an EV and it's trying to get the best possible range. Other than that, it looks like most other Konas that you'll see on the road. The Leaf, a whole new generation, we're told. A brand new vehicle, nothing like the old one. Well, I'm sorry, but when you look at it square on from the side, it's almost identical to the old one. Even the door handles are the same. In my mind, this is nothing but a big facelift. There's so many things in this Leaf that are the same as in the previous Leaf. It's, it's unreal. Everywhere I look, I see little bits and features and, well, whole door panels inside and out that are exactly the same as the old one. What they've done is they've cleverly changed the shape a little bit, especially at the front, added some nice touches like these lights and down the side, well, they've put a different set of wheels on and that's about it. And they've updated a lot of the stuff inside as far as what it can do, ProPilot, etc. So let's take a look at the back of the cars now. And back here, well, my mind does start to change a little bit. I think the Kona looks like every other car. It looks a little bit plain, a little bit boring. There's nothing particularly exciting about it. I like the lights here, they cut in, but that's about it. I much prefer the look of the back of the leaf. Uh, again, it's personal choice, of course it is. But I do like this contrast in colors. I like this blue strip across the bottom. I like how they've put it together and it all seems to just match. Again, I, I really like this light cluster. They seem to have spent an awful lot of time on lights front and back, trying to make them look really appealing. And because of the contrast in the colors, when we come down lower, we see this real contrast here, giving it that quite sporty look at the back. So I think they've done a good job on the back using some of the materials they, and the designs they already had. There's no doubt a lot of this still is the same, but um, it actually looks like a different car from the back as opposed to looking almost identical from the side. And being at the back, well, that leads us really nicely onto having a look at the luggage space. And let's get the suitcases out and have a look. So let's start with the Kona. And if we open the boot, little button underneath to release it and we can pull it up. And in typical SUV fashion, it's not the biggest boot in the world. But what this does have is an extra storage space underneath this load compartment that lifts up. Initially, we got some polystyrene um, sections and then that lifts again to reveal what where could be a spare wheel. And uh, the bits and pieces for that are there, but you could take all that out. Let's be honest, you're gonna stick your charging cables in there. That's gonna be the best place for them, uh, which is great until you've got a bootload of stuff and you want to get access to them, then it becomes a bit of a pain. But that's the, the boot. So let's get the suitcases and um, see what we can get in here. So I'm gonna start off with this nice big blue one. The only way it can go in is sideways. At the moment, we've got this parcel shelf on. Now you may, if you'd seen the comparison with the E-Nero, you may remember that if I put these three cases in, with the parcel shelf, there's no way it's going to shut. So parcel shelf in, we can get one case and a cabin bag, which I don't have the cabin bag today, but I do have my camera bag, which is pretty much the same size. And uh, that will fit in the side there. If I take this off at the top, what we'll find all things being equal as last time, that boot will not shut. 
So as you can see, a, a family amount of luggage that I would suggest to go on holiday with isn't gonna fit in the back of this Kona. Let's have a look in the leaf. And again, to get in the boot, simply push the button underneath, up the boot comes. Again, we've got a parcel shelf, but what we see here is a much deeper boot. There's nothing underneath, I can't lift the floor up. Uh, and this one being the Techno, we have got the Bose sub that's in the back. So it does take a little bit of room up, but let's get these suitcases and have a go. To say that uh, sub is stopping me from pushing that all the way to the back unless I want to put it at an angle. That one now we can see easily fits under that parcel shelf. And my bit of cabin baggage. That slots in there very, very easily. And let's see if we shut the boot, nothing's catching, nothing's stopping. I don't think it will come as any surprise to you if I tell you that this Leaf has got 15 litres more cargo storage area than the Kona. So hands down winner, when it comes to putting stuff in the boot, is the Leaf. Let's have a look in the back of both cars now and see how comfortable they are to travel in. Now in the back of this Leaf, we've got a reasonable amount of room. The driving seat is set up for me, I'm five foot nine. And well, if I'm sitting normally in this car, I've got room, my toes are just tucked under the seat, loads of room in front of my knees. I've got a decent amount of headroom and it's really comfortable. As we've said before, this has got leather, this is a top of the range, but the, the seating layout is gonna be exactly the same. Back here, I don't actually have an awful lot. And one thing I've noticed in my 24 kilowatt hour leaf, I've got a, an armrest here that's got two cup holders in. This hasn't got anything, uh, but I have got some pockets behind my seats. I have got this big tunnel here that uh, will take up some space, which means that although this is a five seat car, unless you are a very, very small adult or a child, you're not gonna wanna sit in this middle uh, seat, certainly not for any length of time. But uh, sat here, it, it's comfortable. I have to say there's plenty of room here for me. If we compare that to the Kona, well, it's a little bit tighter. Again, the driving seat's in my position. I've got a bit of room on my knees there, but not a massive amount. My toes are definitely under the seat here. What I'm feeling is a bit more restricted. I'm feeling like my feet are getting trapped a bit there. So I can't sit as comfortably in the back of this car. But other than that, uh, I have got myself an armrest here, which has got cup holders in, a couple of nets back here. Uh, it's comfortable enough, but it doesn't feel like you have as much room as you do in the Leaf. Uh, and that's not to say that that's a vast, great car that I'd want to spend eight hours a day traveling in the back of. It's just to say there's a bit more room and it's a bit more comfortable. And when it comes to talking about the front of these two cars, what I don't want to do is get hung up on all the, the little individual details because, well, they, they could be different models. They've both got a pro pilot lane assist type feature. Uh, there's various bits and pieces that differ, but it obviously it depends on which model you buy as to what you get. What I do want to talk about is the general feel of the cabins. And in the Kona, I feel like I've got a lot of space and a lot of air. I love this great big screen here because it gives me so much information and it's so easy to see and so easy to use. The information in front of me is all there. It, um, it looks okay. It's nothing particularly modern about that, I'll be honest, but it looks all right. All the bits and pieces are there. And uh, this nice big center console, which has got nice bits of storage, places for my uh, cups to go. Everything is just laid out and it flows through here, making things very easy to find and use. And generally around the car, I've got cup holders in the doors. The uh, glove box at the front isn't massive, but uh, it's a small glove box to keep your paperwork and things in. Seats are comfortable. The steering wheel is nicely laid out. Everything again is on there that I would possibly want. One of the big differences between these two cars is the way that they regenerate power back into the battery when they're driving. This one has a three-stage system using these fluffy paddles. So from regen zero to three, so actually it's four, but three that actually work if you like, uh, it gets progressively stronger. And I like that system. I like the way that you can use it to slow down if you come up to a roundabout or a junction, don't really have to use the pedal uh, and then you can release it to let yourself go again on the, uh, on the other side. Let's go and see how that compares to the Leaf. Well in here, because I'm lower down and because I haven't got as much glass around me and because everything is dark in color, 
you feel a little bit more enclosed and you don't feel like your view is as good and you don't feel like you're getting as much sunlight coming in at you, which until you, you compare the two, until you sit in each one back to back, you don't realise how nice that big open airy feeling is. Hence, you, know, you see all these Teslas now and uh, other modern cars have got the great big uh, windscreens that go up into the roof. There's a reason for that. But other than that, in here, what we find is good quality craftsmanship, I would suggest, for a vehicle of this price. Uh, there's stitching, there's uh, padded bits mixed in with what feels like decent plastic bits. We've still got our shiny piano black plastic, which I hate, but there's not too much of it in here. The screen, I think, is too small. I don't like that. I prefer the big screen. It's... um. It's just another example of how they've just got taken the old leaf and uh, tried to put it into this brand new leaf, which isn't brand new. It, it just looks dated now, it really does. The screen in front of me, all the information's there. Again, it's not ultra modern, but it's very, very easy to read. The, uh, the steering wheel, very, very similar actually, in that you've got all your buttons, everything set out. You can do most things that you would want to from your steering wheel. And I think this is where perhaps the leaf is starting to show its age a little bit now because it doesn't flow as well through here as it does in the Kona. Uh, although some parts of it look a little bit better in the quality, actually you've got a whole section here where the heated seats are and the USB. It looks a bit agricultural, I'd say, in comparison. It looks like they've just put a, a piece of plastic across and put some switches in. I don't like that. Now we spoke about the regen in the Kona, but the way it works in this is from the gear stick. There's nothing behind the steering wheel. You're either in uh, drive or B mode. B mode gives you some additional regenerative braking and you can feel it slowing down quicker. Now, if you have it, you could also have the e-pedal in this car, which will bring the car to an absolute stop, very much like level three on the paddles in the Kona. For me, this car feels like it's of higher quality overall inside, other than those few little bits we've spoken about. Uh, one of the other issues that people always complain about is this, um, this center bit, why they fanned it up and out your knee knocks against it all the time. And it's all right initially, but when you're on a long journey, that is something that gets very annoying. So that's the only other criticism I've got. Other than that, it's a, it's a nice cabin. They're both nice cabins. I would suggest that the Kona is more airy and it feels nicer to be in. The quality of materials used and the way it's put together, I would suggest is better in the Nissan. And so that brings us back to where we begun. And a decision to be made because both of these cars sit very nicely in that segment of the market that would interest me. I'm a family of four, two children, my wife and me. So these cars are the sort of cars I'd be looking at to replace my 24 kilowatt hour Leaf. On one hand, I, when I arrived and I got back in this Kona, I really liked it. I remember just how much fun it was to drive, just how much I liked the inside of this car. But on the other, it just doesn't have the space that we would need as a family. And that suitcase test, test proved it perfectly. The Leaf, it feels a bit dated now. It feels like it's time for it to be updated and something new, uh, some new life injected into it. But I do like the inside of this car. I do like the way it's put together. And I do like just the general driving feel of this being a car over an SUV. So what do I choose? Well, for me, the long and short of it is, this doesn't work for me as a family. This one does, therefore this car wins for me. If only everything was that simple in life. But Ultimately, it's got to come down to some practicalities for me, and the Nissan Leaf ticks all the boxes. It, it's similar in size, similar in the way it drives. I know that our current 24 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf works for us as a family, so this one equally will work for us. The big question mark over it, of course, is Rapid Gate. Have they fixed the issues with the battery with the software update for the battery management system? We're led to believe they have. Uh, from what I've seen online, certainly it's charging better now. It, it needs to, because when I did a test before in it, after just short of 100 miles at dual carriageway motorway speeds, I plugged into a rapid charger and it was only charging at just over 30 kilowatts. That's not good enough. It's not quick enough, especially as we've got these new generation of cars coming online now that can charge that much quicker. This thing needs to be better. But taking that to one side and presuming it's been fixed, we still don't know about the long-term effect it has on the batteries, but let's presume it's okay. Uh, this car for me is the clear winner. But what do you think? What would suit you better? Do you like the more modern styling and looks and feel of the Kona? Or do you like the practicality and the way that the car of the Leaf drives? 
let me know, stick something in the comments below. That's it for today, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully it's uh, given you some information that might help you make a decision on buying one of these cars. Uh, until next time, you take care, I'll see you soon, all the best.